Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a design I came up with for Drop a Rock Day. You can find this page on Facebook. Every year they come up with a word or phrase to write on rocks. They do a poll, everyone votes. And then on July 3rd, every year across the country, across the world, everyone hides the rocks with that exact same phrase. I'm really loving this year's choice, which is Be the Light. So this is a design that I came up with that I want to make to put out on July 3rd. So I'm starting out here with a chalk pencil, lining out some light bulbs. And so they're not all exactly the same size, which kind of drove me a little nuts, but it's okay. They're cute when they're a little bit different. So the next step is to take some Liquitex gesso and base coat each of the light bulbs. Next, I'm going to start filling in the light bulbs, starting with this bright magenta pink. It may take a couple of coats to make sure that you get a solid color, but I'm just taking a small brush, filling in each of the light bulbs with some bright and beautiful colors to start. But of course we have to have at least one yellow light bulb in this mix. So this paint is a little bit different than the apple barrel. It's a folk art, um, I believe it's multi-surface. So it's kind of got some shine to it, but it does have really good coverage for a yellow paint. And then of course my favorite turquoise and we'll end up with some purple to get some bright color into these light bulbs. As always, you add the extra coats that you need to get the coverage that you feel you need. And then the next step is actually going to be taking this spongy dauber. It's a Martha Stewart tool that I got at Michael's. And I'm gonna play around with some white paint. So dipping in the white and then kind of dabbing it off on a paper towel and then adding some lightness to the center of the light bulb. So this is just gonna be a matter of playing with it. I'm going to go back and forth from the light white to the actual pink to make sure that the outside of the light bulb stays in the color and that we're just kind of lightening up that center bit. So it's really just a lot of back and forth until you're comfortable with the way the color looks on there. I just wanted some slight white in there and this spongy tool is perfect for this because you can keep going back and forth until you achieve the look that you want. Don't be afraid to play with this. Don't be afraid to mess it up because worst case scenario, you get too much white on there and you just take some more color and go over it. So it's, it's okay. It's a little scary sometimes, but don't be afraid of it. You can literally, you're just messing with white and the color of the light bulb. So you can make adjustments as you go. These little spongy tools are very handy. Also, if you want to make clouds in a sky, you can use it to give that really fluffy look with the white that blends into a sky. So just a tip if you don't have them, there's a link in the description if you would like to get some for yourself. Now I'm going to take some silver paint and add it to the bottoms of the light bulb where you would screw the light bulb into the lamp or whatever you were <laughs> using um, that part is usually silver so I'm adding silver and I'm adding it kind of thick and I'm not too worried th about the fact that it's got some texture just make sure that those lines are kind of horizontal if there's texture that those lines are going horizontally across the base of the light bulbs Next, I'm going to take my trusty Sakura Pigma fine line paint pen and outline the silver that I just did and add some lines in there so that you can kind of see the threads on the light bulb. So really simple, but it's just a detail that adds to the light bulbs and makes it look that much more realistic. The next step is to draw, I guess it's the element in the light bulb. So just not super perfect here. They all look a little bit different, just kind of some squiggly lines in the middle and two lines going up to meet them. Then I am going to outline each of the light bulbs so that they've got a little bit of contrast. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm also going to add four lines to the light bulbs showing that they're hanging. Next, I am going to take the chalk pencil and line out the word light in a script type font. And I'm just doing this so that it's uh, centered and going in the right direction. Sometimes my writing can go kind of slanted. So the chalk pencil helps me line it out and make sure it's the way I like it before I take the Posca pen to it. So I'm gonna start out here by covering up the chalk pencil where I wrote, and then I'm going to thicken each of the letters anywhere that the pen was going in a downstroke motion. This just adds a unique dimension to the writing and makes it stand out a little bit more. Since the phrase on this rock is be the light, it's not escaping without a fair amount of glitter paint. So I'm gonna start by taking a disposable eyeliner brush and give a very light outline on each of the light bulbs with this hologram glitter paint. It's a nice clear glitter paint that has a lot of dimension and sparkle. So after I do the outline, I'm also going to put a small coat along that center element in each one of the light bulbs. Now I'm gonna take this nail dotting tool, it's the smallest tip size that I have, and do some very small dot and drags to create the look of the light bulbs shining. So this is the hologram glitter paint again, so it will be very faint, but just enough to show that element of shine. Then I'm gonna take that same dotting tool and really lay on the hologram glitter paint on top of the word light. So I'm using the small end for the smaller parts of the letters and then the thicker end on the dotting tool for the thicker parts of the letters. And I just like putting it on this way with a dotting tool because it gets on there nice and thick. So there's lots and lots of sparkle. Then I'm going to come back to the Sakura fine line brush pen and just add a little bit of shadow on the right side. So it's a little bit offset to the right and down. And then I wanted to take a minute to do the back with you. I don't do the backs very often, but because this is for a special event, I thought I would show you what I am going to write on the rocks that I have space for. So I'm writing International Drop a Rock Day, the date, keep or rehide, you decide, so that someone who doesn't know what these are knows what to do with it. And then I usually put post a pic and join the fun and then our local rock group's information. This rock is a little funny because of the crack down the side, but I still have room to add my initials and have a great day. I love this year's theme, so I plan to be making lots of designs and I hope to share some more with you. Thanks for stopping by to watch and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. See you next time.